and how they're not given the same opportunities as males in the coaching field and your thoughts on basically what's happening and how can it be improved and all this stuff. Um, what sports do you coach? Um, we had rugby and boxing before. Um, and football. Um, weightlifting. Okay. Okay, so um, the first question I'd like to ask, have you ever had any, have you ever had any experience where you haven't encountered discrepancies during coaching due to gender? Uh, as in like sort of women have been neglected over men in a coaching scenario yeah or do you know anyone any female coach that has said to you how like they haven't been given the same opportunity as you in, in weightlifting or um, no I haven't I've heard it from a man <laughs> but I haven't heard it from a woman so what happened with this male coach uh, he um he is, uh, he's not British, he's from Iran, so he's like, some of the subtleties of British culture he's not great with, and he's very outspoken, and he's a fantastic coach, but he's like, he's got some things, some setbacks, and they, I think these small things haven't led to him getting as far in British weightlifting as maybe he deserves so like he was uh, he was he didn't get a job as sort of like the England talent pathway manager coach for like the England talent pathway and like some other opportunities have come up that he hasn't been able to get okay I think um, are we talking like negative like negative behaviour towards females or just in general yeah I've seen it massively well not massively but I've seen it yeah because um before the job I do now, I worked um, with the Girls Centre of Excellence, so I worked with, with the girl players for, for, three, for three years, and um, we had some lady coaches that were there and were fantastic, and gone for educational routes to gain understanding of how players learn and things like that, and, and really, really good coaches, and yet, because the women's game isn't as big as the men's game, there's a lack of opportunity where she has to go and work somewhere else to be able to fund her opportunities to coach. So she can't just do a specific coaching job because there isn't one there. So she needs to have another job as well as her coaching? Yeah, and it's a very close shop in terms of allowing women to coach in the men's game, also in, men's, in boys' academies and things like that. a bit of a close shop. I don't think there's any team in the country, I don't think there's got a female coach working as an academy coach. So why do you think it's a very close opportunity, like a very close um, environment and not a lot of women coach? I think it's more. I think to begin with, it's more the fact that the female version of the game wasn't as big until the past two years, maybe where it's really developing and growing now. And I think that they've been stuck in a habit for so many years of just men coaching with the boys and even men taking over ladies' football as well. And I just think that um, that it's become just a little bit automatic now. That everybody just seems to do it and. I think it seems a little bit alien now to say, well, we'll let the crossover go the other way. And I don't know, maybe we'll live in the like, years because women's games are only going to get bigger and then maybe it's in the summer as well. It's going to make women coaches more high profile, but you'd hope because I've seen some great women coaches that have an opportunity. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Thanks, mate. How would I improve it? Yeah, so your thoughts to like, improve how your national governing body or how your um, governing body structure like, includes women and. I think, I think well, the, on the UEFA qualifications, the the amount of um, ladies that are getting on the course now has increased quite a bit to how it used to be. Um, but I think the start point can be as simple as saying that, that it has to be a lady head coach for women's football because at the moment, like. Males, if they're not making it in the men's game, will cross over and just go and make it in the, in the ladies' game. I think there needs to be something in there, maybe as a start, that says that it, there has to be a certain amount of female female coaches working with female players. I think that's the start, and then because at least then they've got a chance to prove themselves in their own format. Because at the moment, if a male, if a male's not good enough in one, it will just cross over to the ladies. Is that because coaching women is easier than coaching the men, or because there's more opportunities? There's more opportunities. Uh, I think it's easy to coach them as well because 
I do think it's easier to coach them in the sense of that they'll do what you ask them to. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, because because the boys because boys watch so much football and have like the their superstars that they really really like. They try and copy them and they think they understand the game better. Whereas with girls, because there's not as much exposure to a female game, they're much more willing to take what you say and think, yeah, that's probably right. I've had the same experience with women that they tend to listen more and want to prove more mm. than the men. Less ego. <laughs> I would say. Uh, I've, uh, th it's quite similar to weightlifting, I'd say it just needs to, because women's weightlifting has only been in the Olympics since 2000, um, so its participation is still sort of rising. However, in my particular national government body, um, <clears throat> they recently just lost their funding and they reapplied for it and they got it all back and more, but only for the women. So, like, men's weightlifting is pretty much like it's there's no money in it whatsoever. It's all gone to women's weightlifting. So, I think that will probably have a massive difference in like the amount of female athletes and coaches that are Why? produced. Um, do you think all the money has gone to the females and not to the males? Is there a reason so, in particular? It's because they're more competitive at um, internationals. So because I think this is probably going to sound really bad, but I think because it's been less competitive up to this point, it's a little bit easier to get into women's weightlifting and be a little bit more successful than it is as a man. So and that's allowed like a couple of our athletes to sort of get to sort of the top end of, of lifting, whereas the men are really really struggling. And obviously drugs in our sport is like terrible. Okay. And I think it's less used in women's weight than in men's, although it is still used a lot. I think um, a few things as well, I think, because it's probably to really stand in other countries. Like, I mean, out in America, the ladies' game in America has been massive more than the men's, and the men's is only just catching up now, so it's like the flip side. And I don't know whether it's uh, from both sides of a man, a male and a female part, is. Uh, is knowing and being willing to take the opportunities in other, in other countries and other situations. Because I know that English coaches traditionally aren't very keen on working abroad, and, and I think that sometimes you go where the opportunities are. And I think that, that in some countries the female game is bigger than the men's game. So I think, but then I don't think England is that open at the moment to see that because there's so much money in the men's game. I don't think there's. Uh, I don't think there's. I don't think they feel that they need to develop the ladies' game. I mean, it's all such a tight knit group. It's, it's such a minority sport. Like everyone knows everyone, so all the groups are sort of. Like, <coughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what barriers there would be. Would you say, like, in all the weightlifting coaches that you know, are the majority of them female or male? Male. More often than not. But there is, I mean, there are a, good, a couple of female weightlifting coaches, and there are some at the top as well, like the, um, the head coach of the England Commonwealth squad building into the Glasgow Games is a woman. So, like, I mean, it's, there are women at the top as well, so it's like that's sort of why I'm like, really um, I think that it's more open at the bottom end, I think, so more of the grassroots end, I think that it's more open to female coaches working, working as well, and um, I think that, yeah, I think that, and then as it goes up the pathway, it seems to be, it seems to just fizzle out as it goes on and on. I mean, I mean, like, similar to you, like I said, I don't know many, like, even from working for three years in ladies football, I don't know that many female coaches, because they're, unfortunately, there isn't that many, but one of the ones that I did work with in my last job was one of the best I've ever worked with. And yet, as I said, having to work with having to do another job alongside just to, to be able to do both, but um, which I think is disappointing because I said it's one of, the, one of the best coaches I work with, and it's struggling to make a career in just football. Do you think there's a difference between a male coach and a female coach? Is there like physical or, or any difference in the way that they coach or the way they are, which doesn't allow them to get as far as males? I've never really been coached by. Uh, 
uh, that's a fire woman. I've got all my co I've only had two coaches, but they're both for men, so I don't really know. Um, I was going to say, like, actually, like, I think maybe some of the barriers that have blocked some more female coaches coming into weightlifting is maybe to do with some of the stigma around weightlifting and, you know, injuries and women getting bulky and that sort of thing. So maybe that's. Uh, uh, I think she was a good coach. Uh, but she'd, she'd have to, yeah, be, she'd have to be a good coach or like have some sort of something to to have herself established. So there's there's more. It's easier for a male coach to get out there than a female coach. A female coach would have to have a lot of good background information and uh, yeah, success to be able to. I'd still know a lot. Of, like even if I was having a male coach, I'd still like. You know, my coach at the moment is uh, was it went to the Olympics. You know, he was a national record holder back in his day. So, like, I don't know. I think I'm probably a bit snobby when it comes to it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be coached by the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I understand because you want to be the best. Yeah. I think um, I think in terms of the coaching style and the coach, I think there is a massive difference. But I think it's down to the fact of limited opportunity because um, as I said, like in a lot of ages that I coach and stuff, there's a lot of like emphasis around the player and the approach. So you set in the environments and they go and perform and try and set in problems to solve. But the thing I found with, with a lot of female coaches, and due to the environment, is they feel like they've got to get all their information out to show that they know it. Whereas I think in the men's game, it's a lot of oh, well, he's qualified, so he must know it. And there's a lot more freedom for a coach to be able to say, yeah, we'll put the athlete at the centre of it and let them try and solve the problem before we tell them how they might improve. Whereas with a with a lady coach, I feel some female coaches, I feel sometimes it's a case of they feel like they've got to say their points because otherwise people won't realise they've got a good knowledge of the game and that. In, that's like a very autocratic approach, which in turn they're not very happy. They don't really like it. So, um, so really, the system doesn't help them at all. Yeah. Sorry, I disagree with that. <laughs> no, no, no. I completely agree. That's <laughs> right. How often my coaching has been so, like, how, does, so how does your like national governing body incorporate females? Do they have specific pathways or courses or whatever for them, or is there like nothing? They basically have to go like. Four four but then my my governing body does nothing much at all anyway. <laughs> we only have two courses, and then you're sort of that's as far as you can go in as a club coach or whatever. Um, and it's yeah, it's not specific to men or women or anything like this. And there's no structure afterwards to place you in a club or get your experience. Like they might, they might try and organise, you know, you shadowing someone to get some more experience in your coaching ability, but. And that's the yeah, extent of it. So it's just like a, you, you would just say you've just got a young national body. Yeah, like, yeah, it's just a minority sport, they've got no money, they've got very little structure. So I think in a way, I think it would help if they had that, because that would be like sport, either like male and female linking together sort of thing. I think that puts female coaches off sometimes, it's a very male dominated environment with sometimes big egos and big opinions. And I think it's unfair sometimes that they don't have their own, maybe like a course where it's just for females, because that'll probably increase the participation. So I, mean, um, I mean, like in the courses that I've done, I think I think I've had three female coaches in all the qualifications that I've done. How many have you done? Uh, five, six, six. Six, and you've only ever met three on the course. Yeah, three female coaches. And the ones that are on it are pretty good as well, but they just came a bit of intimidating as well. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember how many women were on the coach the courses I've been on, but it's definitely male orientated. Definitely. Uh, in terms of ratio. Yeah, like, um, like I, there's there's an excellent coach in Wales, Michaela Breeze, she was an ex-Olympian from uh, GB. She's got a very successful weightlifting club and got a lot of respect within it. Um, 
you know, like I was saying before, there's a woman at the head of yeah. who's running the England Commonwealth squad. Um, so I'm thinking about it, like those are really the only two. Um, like, there's another coach who sort of also runs the qualification courses, but she's less experienced and less established. Um, but yeah, like, I guess that's, those are like, thinking about it, that's like three women and you can't really think of any more. And like, I mean, it's a very small, tight-knit sport, where, and everyone kind of knows everyone, but yeah, it's not, it's not very many at all. Um, as in just the ones that I've experienced working with, which is very good, and I don't think as well. I don't want to don't want to name names, but I think that the figurehead of women's coaching in football didn't do an amazing job to warrant other female coaches getting involved in the game. Can you tell us the name? No. Just so you can reference. No, no, because then you'll put my name next to it. Oh, no. No, I'm sorry, I do. no, but I think that the figurehead of it, I think, didn't do the push of snow to do the best job, and I think that had a negative effect on the individual. But I can't say it was. This is the one you're saying. I think so. Just go set the other day. Is that how I can't say. It's hard. It's got to be her girl. She didn't want to go set the other day because it's like, yeah, because you have this. I don't even know. It's going to be like, very diplomatic. Yeah, you're just on the text. Yeah, it's exactly like. Oh, no, that was shit in the year. She got sacked. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you should I record the last one because I already have two recordings on and I haven't got one for there. Oh, it's, um, no more space. But I've got two recordings from here. <laughs> okay, well, I'm